Thank you so much for hitting play on another episode of the Luke Kelly Show. I'm Luke. I'm the one that talks to you every single Monday and Wednesday on the podcast, and then I bring in my wife to, you know, smut it up a little bit on the podcast. Nora's holding her uh, headphones off. It is so loud. Woo. Yeah. Okay, that's a little bit better. I was just like... There's a control for your headphones. You think I know which one that is? Oh, it's that one? Okay, so much better. Okay. Trying to make me go deaf over here? Well, see, that's a problem with me. And it was always the problem with me when I worked in radio, too. I always had the volume so loud on my headphones. Which is funny because, like, when we ride in the car together, like, you have, like, the music at, like, volume six. Mm -hmm. And then when I drive to work, I have it at volume 20. And if it's a good song, it's volume 22. Way too loud. No, because it has to be loud enough that it I can still hear it over my awful singing. Well, I, I, I think the other problem for me is when you're talking on the radio, if you've ever heard a radio person talk over the start of another song, that's the reason why you have to wear headphones to monitor what you're saying, feel the song, see how much time you have left and stuff. But when you would talk on air, you would have your microphone at a certain level, but you would also, also have the music playing at a certain level. And sometimes if you didn't have your headphone volume... At a certain level, it was hard to hear yourself talk over the music. That makes sense. So that's why I always had mine so loud because I always felt like I was being drowned by the music. So I couldn't hear what I was saying, kind of. that was like so loud that I felt like I was going to have to yell to be able to hear my own voice. And that's the problem that a lot of radio people get into as well. The volume's really loud, so they talk louder. Or I would Even when they don't need to, or you would have been talking back away from the microphone. Yeah. So we don't need any of that. Let's get into the good stuff, though. You came prepared with another quote. I got a good one. Um, so this book is by the same book, same author that I read last week, The Royally Not Ready. Okay. Um So this one is kind of like a spin off of Pretty Woman. A girl gets fired um, from her job. And the girl who, her boss that fires her is actually like her childhood best friend. And so she has decided, I know, she's decided that she's going to get back at her by finding like a rich husband and bringing the rich husband to like their class reunion. So she goes walking around like the fancy neighborhood in California and bumps into this guy who is trying to close a deal for his, um, he works in like commercial real estate and he is trying to close a deal with this guy who has some properties, but the guy won't really close a deal unless like he has kind of more of a personal connection versus a, um, just a more contractual obligation and so he he, the guy I can't think of his name now oh Huxley Huxley tells the the other guy that he's trying to close the deal with um he says that he has a fiance who's pregnant because the guy he's trying to close the deal with has a fiance who is pregnant so he's like what a coincidence so do I so he meets crashes into this girl and he strikes a deal with her and says like I will go to your class reunion with you. I will pay off your student loans. You will have a free place to live if you pretend to be my fake pregnant fiance until this deal is closed. Reasonable. Yes. And then the other deal was um, he, he had, since he's very well known and, and is obviously rich, her sister had like an organizational business and he said, I have contacts for your sister and I will help your sister kind of get... Wow. On her footing. And then, of course, you know, they have to fall in love. But it's very much like they're both very, very stubborn and grumpy. So um, the scene that I have for this week is um, she tells him that she wants him and he tells her no 
because he is very businesslike and does not want to cross the line. So she decides to get back at him, storms out of the room, goes into her room, leaves all of the doors open, and decides to take a shower, and he follows her into the bathroom to try to, like, explain to her. He took a shit while she was showering. No. Oh, no. Oh. He follows her because he's trying to, he's going to try to explain to her, like, why he won't cross this line. Um, and this is what he sees. He says, water runs down her chest, off the tips of her nipples, and all the way down her flat stomach to her smooth pussy. My mouth waters. My hands itch to touch her, feel her. My body aches to be in that shower with her. Once she's doused in water, she turns her back toward the dildo and then bends at the waist, angling herself just enough to, oh, fuck. My teeth bite into my bottom lip as she slowly backs up onto the dildo, inserting it into her, into her tight hole. Yes, she moans softly as she pulls her wet hair to one side, intently fixated on what she's doing. I watch her pelvis move around in soft circles. Fuck, my cock grows so tight that it's painful. I swore I wouldn't masturbate in front of her, that if I were to come, I'd come inside her. So did he end up coming inside of her? Did they have sex, or did she just go to town on the dildo that was stuck on the she shower? She ends up, and I think there was like a second part of the quote that I may have wanted to read. Yes, and then the second part of the quote that I wanted to, to read to it was, um, oh God, she mumbles against my cock as she swivels her hips against the dildo. Can't say I particularly like her getting off with something other than my hand or my mouth, but it's not. But it's hot having her fuck herself while she fucks me with her mouth. Wow, nice. That was a little bit better than what I was expecting it to be. <laughs> were you were you worried because it was a book that I read and not a book that Rachel has read? Yeah, pretty much. Wow. <laughs> Although the one that you had last week was good too. You really liked the royally, the one that was kind of like a Princess Diaries kind of a... You really liked that one. So I felt like this was the same author. I felt like this... Yeah, but just because the same director of a movie... That's produces true. something. I mean, it's not the same every single time. You don't know what to expect. That's true. Because the book that I'm reading right now, I had high hopes that it was going to be really smutty, um, because it is one of the, one. It's a co co written, and but one of the authors wrote the book Praise, which is about a pope, okay, and a church, and that book was raunchy. It's about a pope. Yeah, like a Catholic pope. Yes. Oh. Just, I, I don't just, really, I don't really w want to know about that one. Just for clarity, if you do it in the confessional, your sins are wiped away. Hmm. For some reason, you learn a lot about the Catholic loopholes in that book. Um. For some reason, I, I don't feel <laughs> like you learn enough about the Catholic loopholes that you're talking about, <laughs> because most of the time. It's been known that priests don't really follow. Popes, yeah, they break different people with inside of the Catholic religion, and mostly the priest. If they were to do something like that, weren't it, weren't doing it people of age? Oh no, at least at least the girl that he's doing it with is a stripper and she's of age. Okay. Um. Because that's, yeah, that's like a huge thing in the Catholic Church oh, about yeah. priests that have gotten caught with minors. Same-sex minors. And yeah, and it's, yeah, so that's, that's why I was like, oh, no, that's not going to be a good story. Yeah, no, this one was a full, I don't think an author would, any author would feel comfortable. I mean, I know I wouldn't either. But if you're writing something that is basically now they're, they're, about the Catholic Church and you're including that, it might be kind of hard to avoid that because it's always a point of conversation. Yeah. Um, now, Rachel has read a, a few books that talk about, like, um, underage minor sex trafficking, but it's they are not the love story of of the book, so... Um, well, good. I'm just happy that it didn't go there because I was like, oh, God, this, <laughs> no, no, that no, no, is no. not good. 
I would never read a book like that either. Um, but no, the book that I'm reading, so ironically, the quote for this book is Merry Little Meek, or Not So Meek Cute by Megan Quinn. And the book that I'm reading is A Merry Little Meek Cute, um, which is like a Christmas-themed book. It's so. about that time of year. I know. It's so funny because I have like two Halloween books that I read my goal was to read like football books in the month of October, and I have yet to read a football book. I apologize. It's okay. Starting November first, just start reading all Christmas. No, I I usually do a lot of Christmas in December. So well, make it two months. Yeah, but I do think it's funny that I saw on my like Instagram story, like your memories or whatever, that like I was on book like. 65 or 70 of the year at this time last year and let me guess you're probably at 153 i'm at 125 so i mean i've just i've just sped up my reading just a little (laughs) see what happens you dedicate to reading you become better at reading you retain faster you faster retain Retain more, and my eyesight has gotten better since. Really, with reading, mm-hmm. I didn't know that could be a thing. I thought that it would put a little bit more strain on your eyes. Reading off of a Kindle. Um, when I went to my last eye appointment last year, my eyes had actually gotten better. Really, yeah. and aren't you supposed to be going again soon? Um, I think like in January or February. So. I went to the eye doctor. I know. I was so happy because we've been together for six years and you have not been to the eye doctor i haven't but i went because i was having a lot of problems with my eyes blue light has just been killing me like even being in front of my computer monitor right now i'm not really looking at the monitor but it's with insight it hurts my eyes which so i was having a lot of issues because i have three computer screens in front of me at work and i will say I think when you were in radio, your computer screens were more of like a different backlighting of like that software system was more of almost like a DOS yeah, kind it, of a system. Yeah. And the text, it wasn't as harsh on your eyes, but you having to stare at a more like HD monitor and a laptop screen, that is what's killing your eyes. Yeah, so I went... Because I was like, there has to be something wrong with my eyes because my head hurts. If I'm looking at my phone, my computer monitors. Even the TV. I'm, uh, the TV sometimes is hit or miss. It really depends on how much strain my eyes have been through throughout the day. Mm. And if it's been bad, I just know that I need to keep my, my glasses on, the blue light blockers that I have, or else my headache will be 10 times worse. But... I did enjoy going to the uh, eye doctor because he let me know a little bit. He said, there's nothing wrong with your eyes. He said, what's happening to your eyes is, he's like, "Let let me put this in a different aspect. Say you go work out and you're working out for eight hours a day. And you know you're going to be working out for eight hours a day. So you grab a light weight. You grab a five-pound weight, and you're going to be doing curls for eight straight hours. He was like, yeah, it's only five pounds, but after a while, you're going to become super tired because of the repetition of continually to do that throughout the day. He said, your eyes are muscles. So you're looking at a monitor all day, and then all of a sudden, your eyes are starting to get tired. That's what's happening to your eyes. But he was like, there's nothing wrong with your vision. You're just having to deal right now with having very fatigued eyes. Which blows my mind that you are in your 30s and do not need contacts or glasses except to help with the strain of your eye. But, like, you literally have 20-20 vision still. Right. There is a tad of prescription in these because of what I need for the blue light glasses that he prescribed me there's just a little bit and I would say the way that this prescription works is HD TV and non HD TV so when I have the blue light blockers on because he made a little simulation for me when I have these glasses on 
I was watching HGTV without HG, him. Not HGTV. Yeah, HGTV. It sounded like you said with the G, and I was no, like, you HDTV. <laughs> um, so, but, uh, and it was like regular standard definition, not having those glasses on at all. So he was like, this is going to help you out a lot. It's going to be a lot less, you know, stressful on your eyes, and you should be, you know, seeing a lot, a lot better with that out them on as well because I told him that I was having some issues driving at night too and uh, he's like well that's going to happen a little bit with age but your eyes just so happen to be so fatigued that when you're putting your eyes into another bad situation yeah (laughs) they're just overworked so he was like I think having the blue light blockers is actually going to be beneficial for you now driving at night and I was like thanks doc so I'm shooting. I, I should be getting a call from them this week. This week to go and pick up my glasses. Nora helped me pick them out. She wasn't at the appointment, but it was <laughs> super funny. The lady that worked there, she picked out a ton of glasses for me, and she did a really good job. I have to say, she took a look at my face, kind of in the structure of it, your skin tone, and just went to start picking glasses. Went to town, and she was like, she. Took into account my eye color and hair color, you know, like all those different things. It's like, yeah, she knows what she's doing. And there was one pair. She was like, I really, I think these are going to look really good because of your eye color and your eye color is going to pull through on these color of the glasses. And she was getting all into it. And she was like, but I think we need your wife's opinion. And she was like, (laughs) FaceTime her right now. So that's what we ended up doing. So I should be getting those this week. I'm looking forward to it. Maybe I'll go through because I've n- never really had vision insurance, mm-hmm. and my prescription is so bad that I have to get thinner lenses, and then I have to get the blue light and the anti glare. And so, like every time I've gone to an actual like eye doctor's office, they're like, "Okay, after the hundred and fifty dollar credit from your insurance, it's like three seventy five for your glass, you know, for your glasses." So I've always gone through I buy direct because I could get the my regular everyday glasses and a pair of sunglasses for a hundred and twenty. Right. Yeah. Without insurance, now they're not the best lenses, so I probably should go through them. But I always felt like, well, at least like if these broke or, you know got scratches on them I didn't feel right it wasn't that big of a deal yeah but they do say that what's nice is if you get their your frames through them or anywhere these aren't the nicest frames but like you they can if your prescription changes you can just keep your frames and then it would just go towards cool so and I mean this is my the glasses that I have now I've ordered now twice because I couldn't they're your signature look I think I think so too. Like the amount of compliments that I get on my glasses. And I had these glasses before all of the bloggers had these glasses. I was about to say, you started the trend. I know. I got these glasses and they were out of my comfort zone, but I was like, yeah, I'll try them. And they're just like a tortoise shell, you know, print. And then all of a sudden, like six months later, there's like three bloggers who have endorsements with the company that I got mine from. And they all have these glasses. And I was like, why am I not getting paid for this? But You should be, but I you should be. you weren't putting them out there like, hey, look at the new glasses I got from I, I Buy Direct. That's what you got to do sometimes. I know. Well, thanks for stopping by. Next week, I can't wait to hear about that, that new book. I know, because you love Christmas. I do love Christmas. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Christmas and porn stars. That's all. Sounds like a good book. <laughs> and it's going to be Christmas time next week, so we'll be good. What do you mean Christmas time next week? Yeah, it's going to be Christmas time next week. So since I didn't decorate for fall to like the 10th of, sept- of nope. September. November 1st. So I feel like I just the, decorated for The a reason why I say that is the 31st is on Monday. Christmas time starts November 1st. So my so my my lunch break on Tuesday at home I'm going to have to be dec- No, you don't have to. Okay. I guess for the listeners, I get 2 months of fall. So I get all of September and all of October for fall decorations. That is correct. 
and Luke gets all of November and all of December. And we are pretty good sticklers of the tree comes down. Usually the day after. Or New New Year's weekend. Yeah. So, but people make fun of us, but we usually go away for Thanksgiving. So it is so nice to come back from traveling at Thanksgiving and having everything's just Christmas. I explained to my coworkers what we do, and they're like, you know what, that that makes sense. And who doesn't love Christmas? And I said, just just because think about it. And I guess I could explain this a little bit more next week, though, too. It's so homey. It is very homey whenever you decorate for for Christmas. But after Thanksgiving, you usually let like a week go by. And then all of a sudden, you put up your decorations that next week and you really only have like two weeks with your Christmas decorations. And it's a lot of work to do Christmas decorations. Exactly. Fall decorations take me about an hour to do around the house. And to put up the Christmas decorations... And put that much work into it for it to only be up for two weeks is dumb. Yeah. You might as well get more happiness out of that time. Because when I see Christmas decorations, it brings happiness to my life. I know. That's so sad to put it all the way. But I'm excited because my grandma's coming the week before Christmas to visit us. So she we will actually get to have someone come and visit the house with our Christmas decorations. It's more for us. Than anyone else. But oh, she course. will get to see it. Because she doesn't get to do that because she's got cats that just tear it all down. Yeah, But she'll get to see it. Well, Christmas time next week. I'm looking forward to it. It officially starts on Monday or Tuesday. I'm sorry. Christmas has to wait just one extra day. I mean, not one extra day. It's always, like I said, two months for Christmas. The 31st, expecting some trick-or-treaters, got those full-size candy bars, but I'm also going to be getting into something that I haven't done in a while. I told you about this thing that I haven't done in six years that I'm going to get back into, and it's going to be a hobby of mine. It started off as something I did to earn extra, extra cash, right? When I was in college, I used to referee and umpire Uh, sports, so umpire, baseball, referee, basketball. I said, you know what? I miss refereeing basketball. I actually miss umpiring baseball too, but it's so intense, especially if you do the summer ball stuff. Too many parents are loudmouths, make the game not fun. So that's why I always stay away from doing travel baseball and a big reason why I would never get back into doing baseball. But basketball I enjoy because it's quick. The season's pretty short for the most part, November to about the beginning of January, middle of January. Um, I, I guess sometimes late January, but it's a pretty quick season. And there's a time restriction on the game. You're indoors, so you don't have to worry about elements or anything like that. And my preferred level of officiating is JV basketball. And you might say, why? Wouldn't you want to do varsity? Now, don't get me wrong. I do enjoy doing varsity basketball as well. But JV basketball, people don't care about. Because most of the time, it's just kids that need to get some reps in. They're still not yet developed to be on varsity. The coach for the JV team is an assistant on the varsity and doesn't really care all that much about it. I mean, he cares because he wants the kids to develop, but there's just not that much stress on winning. It's more of a developmental thing. So it's like a no pressure situation to go in there and officiate. And it's not saying that the reason why I I want to be in that sort of situation is because I'm a bad official. I actually think I'm pretty good at refereeing basketball. But I just don't want to hear it. Everyone thinks they know the rules of the sports. But majority of people that are in the stands yelling do not know the rules of the sport. There would be so many times, especially doing uh, umpiring baseball, in the summer doing travel ball to hear parents just yelling stuff that was not true. Like 
if only they knew the rules. That's what it, the inner monologue was in my brain. If only they knew the rules. And not as much in basketball because I feel basketball has more plain black and white rules. Now, there are some some nuances to some rules in basketball, but for the most part, they're just straightforward. People will yell in the stands, but you can kind of block that out. I was always really good at blocking out people in the stands. The coaches, that was a different thing. And and to be honest with you, a lot of people, how could you deal with a coach yelling at you in your face? I always told them before the game, I'm a human. You're going to treat me with respect, just like I'm going to treat you with respect. We can talk about things. If you disagree, that's the route that we're going to go. We're going to talk about it. But you're not going to scream and shout at me. I don't like that. Like I said, I will talk to you the way that you talk to me. So that's that's how I always approach that situation and bring it mellow, you know? Be like, we're going to have a good, clean game. We're going to have fun. We're going to take care of that game. That's it. Not anything else. You're not going to yell at me. Just like I don't like when coaches yell at players either. I get it. I understand. But sometimes it doesn't make you look like the best person if you're screaming, yelling at a player in their face. You know, it's like, geez, settle down. Settle down. So I'm excited about that. I got to I gotta get my, I don't know what you call it. I almost said jersey, but I don't know if that's right. The referee top, the shirt, pants. Got to buy all that stuff again because I got rid of it because I never thought I would do it again. I'm like, I got a lot of free time now. Need a, need a hobby. And I can make some extra cash too, so that's good. So I'll be excited whenever I get my first game. I got to reach out to someone that assigns games or whatever. Didn't realize that's what you had to do in Kentucky. But yes, you got to reach out to an assigner and join their association. Boo. I don't like that. But whatever. I'll be doing that this winter. Excited. All right. Well, thank you so much for showing up and listening today. I'll talk to you on Monday on an all new episode of The Luke Kelly Show.